Hi everyone, I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to talk about limits and colimits, and in particular, I'm going to prove that limits and colimits are unique, meaning unique up to unique isomorphism. You can understand why limits and colimits are unique by looking at the simplest example of a limit. That's a terminal object. That's the limit of an empty diagram. As a reminder, an object T is a terminal object in a category if for any object X, there's a unique morphism from X to T. In order to see that T is unique up to unique isomorphism, let's suppose that we have another terminal object called T prime. Then we'll have unique maps from T to T prime because t prime is terminal, and from t prime to t, because t is terminal. And it turns out that these two maps must be isomorphisms. We already know that they're unique because of the definition of terminal object. And so to finish the argument, I just need to show that these two maps are inverses of one another. In order to show that, you can compose the map from t to t prime with the map from t prime to t to get a map from t to t. Now, that composition must be the identity because we always have the identity map from t to t, and because t is a terminal object, that map is unique. Therefore, any map from t to itself must be the identity, in particular, the composition of the map from t to t prime and t prime to t. In the same way, the composition in the other order must be the identity on T prime. Thus, we're able to conclude that there's a unique isomorphism between any two terminal objects. And this justifies the following terminology. Instead of saying that we have a terminal object, because it's unique up to unique isomorphism, we can call it the terminal object and use that definite article, the. And now we can go on to more complicated categorical limits and colimits. Here is the diagram that would be relevant for talking about a pullback. You have three objects, A, B, and C, and a morphism from A to C, and a morphism from B to C. The limit of this diagram, call it X, is called the pullback of the diagram involving A, B, and C. And to say what we mean to say that a pullback is unique up to unique isomorphism and prove it, it helps to think of diagrams as functors and maps to diagrams as natural transformations. More generally, if F is a diagram of shape D in a category C, a limit of this diagram F is an object X together with a map to the diagram F. And if this limit exists, then the object X together with the map to the diagram F is unique up to unique isomorphism. Let me remind you how to think of a diagram as a functor. So if you have a diagram in a category, say something that looks like the diagram relevant for pullbacks, so you have objects A, B, and C, and morphisms from A to C and B to C. You can think of this as a functor from a small indexing category. Here, the indexing category consists of three objects, identity morphisms, which I won't picture, and two non-identity morphisms from two of the objects to the third. Now, call this diagram category D. A functor from this category D to a category C consists of choosing three objects of the category C, call them A, B, and C, and two morphisms, one from A to C and one from B to C. Now, a limit of this diagram is an object X together with a map from X to the diagram. Such a thing is called a cone over the diagram. What is a map from X to the diagram? Well, it consists of a map from X to all the objects in the diagram. Here, that's A, B, and C so that the resulting diagram is commutative. Here, I've erased the map from X to C because it must be the composition of the map from X to A and A to C, which also must be the composition of the map from X to B to B to C, and so it's determined.
So I've just described what it means for X to be a cone over the di diagram or a map from X to the diagram. To say that X is the limit means that this map from X to the diagram is universal, meaning for all other maps from Y to the diagram, there exists a unique map from Y to X so that the map from Y to the diagram is just the composition of the map from Y to X with the map from X to the diagram. So the key is this little triangle in the corner involving Y, X, and the diagram F. Let's expand that into a bigger picture that might be helpful. So the limit X is a map from X to the diagram. Y is another map to the diagram. And to say that X is the limit means that there's a unique map, I called it eta, from Y to X so that the map from Y to the diagram is equal to the composition of eta with the map from X to the diagram. Using the more succinct notation allows us to just recycle the argument that terminal objects are unique to prove that limits are unique. So if we assume that X prime is another limit of the diagram F, because X prime comes with a map to the diagram, there must be a unique map, call it eta prime, from X prime to X, pre-composition of which gives the map from X prime to F. Similarly, if X prime is a limit, then there must be a unique map, call it eta, from X to X prime, pre-composition of which gives the map from X to the diagram F. And just as in the case of terminal objects, these maps, which we already know are unique, must compose to give the identities. So, for example, if you compose the map from X prime to X with the map from X to X prime, you get a map from X prime to X prime. The identity is another map from X prime to X prime that sits over the diagram F. And by uniqueness, this composition, eta, eta prime, must be equal to the identity on X prime. Similarly, the composition, eta prime, eta, must be equal to the identity on X and we see that eta and eta prime are, are isomorphisms. This allows us to make the conclusion that the limit of a diagram in a category, if it exists, is unique up to unique isomorphism. And this concludes this video. I'll leave it as an exercise to give the parallel arguments proving that co-limits, when they exist, are unique up to unique isomorphism. Thanks for your attention.